Then there are various general improvements to the language. Next to the more detailed stuff I just showed you, um, we have simplified various definitions. Uh, some definitions were very long and wordy, uh, could be rephrased, could be simplified, and we also aligned definitions within the language. If you read the, the standard closely, you would, you would see that, for example, the definition of a service in the three different layers, so business service, application service, and technology service, um, those definitions were slightly different, but we've now made them much more similar, which makes it also easier to learn the language, uh, and that's across the framework, so we have done that in, in various places. Then we changed various definitions to increase the alignment with SOGAF. Um, this Harmony project I introduced at the beginning has taken a critical look at the definitions in both frameworks, has uh, looked at the correspondence between uh, these, these two different standards and come up with suggestions for improving the definitions and that's what we implemented in the new version of Artemis as well. As you may know, uh, people are working on uh, the next version of the TOGA standard uh, too. Uh, this is still a work in progress, but hopefully uh, they will also implement some of these changes there so that we increase the line from the other end as well uh, and come up with a more, more coherent set of standards within the open group. This does not mean that you can only use Archimit with SOGAF or vice versa, uh, but they are better aligned in this way. Um, then there are some changes to improve consistency of Archimate. Um, so one example is that we change the name of some of the concepts. You might remember that in the technology layer, everything was called infrastructure something. Well, that's a bit strange. In the business layer, it was business something. Why was it infrastructure something? So we renamed that to technology something. That's much more logical than we you know what we have. Um, so that's just a change of name of, of, of several concepts. It doesn't make uh, any difference for the meaning or the notation of the concept, but it's just a name change. Another change is that we added some concepts to create more, more uh, symmetry between the layers in the standard. Uh, at the business layer, we have business process, business interaction, and business collaboration. At the application layer, we used to have application uh, function uh, and application uh, component and application interaction, but we didn't have a process concept. So at the application layer, we now added a, an application process concept that helps, that helps you express uh, things like uh, orchestration processes. So that's a new concept there. Uh, we already had interaction and collaboration, but at the technology layer, we didn't have either of these. We didn't have a process, we didn't have an interaction, we didn't have a collaboration. So those were added to that layer as well. So now you have the same set of uh, concepts across these three layers uh, when it concerns behavior, when it concerns collaboration. Furthermore, we also added an event concept at these layers. Um, we had a business event, of course, but there are also application and technology events. Say if a server fails, that might constitute a technology event, and you want to model those. And we even added an event in the implementation and migration set of elements, because, uh, for example, that a deliverable is ready is also an event. And events can be attributed with a timestamp to denote when something happens, and this also helps you especially in this implementation migration uh, world, to, to uh, model planning and model roadmaps, etc. So you can see when certain things are ready or must be ready and model that using events. This is the only place where we put in a time notion. We didn't want to complicate things further than that. We didn't want to put it, for example, in uh, processes. You could argue that you might want to have timed processes, etc. But Archimate doesn't want to have the, say, the details of a language like BTM, and it's not about detailed process modeling, so we avoided that. But you can model events with time, and that provides you at least some uh, structure for, for mapping this onto, onto the time dimension. Well, then there are various other kinds of changes. All the examples across the document have been uh, uh, replaced. We used to have very small examples with each concept, but we, we replaced them with a smaller number of larger examples that show these concepts in context. That's easier to understand, it's more useful, and the concepts uh, are more lifelike in that way. 
we also removed the use of the word extension. We used to have the motivation extension and the implementation migration extension. And it sounded a bit like sort of an optional add-on to the standard. But they are an integral part of the, of the language and not just something optional. So the word extension was a bit misleading and we simply replaced it by elements. So you have the motivation elements now. Um, we also added an appendix describing the relationship with several other standards. We created new tables of relationships. So those are also various uh, minor additions. Well, the table of relationships, that's a big one. Um, but those are the things that are less obvious to the, to the user of, of Archimate. Um, then there are a few changes in notation. We abolished the required interface notation. We noticed that hardly anybody uses them. Uh, it's sort of awkward, so that's been removed. It, it also didn't have a good position in the meta model because it was an interface, but a strange kind of interface, sort of a missing interface. So this this didn't really fit the structure of Archimate. And then we changed the notation of representation contracts slightly because uh, they looked like deliverable and business objects, uh, respectively. So. And by adding a, a, an extra line to the notation, you can now easily see the difference. So contract has a line at the bottom as well, and representation a line at the top. It's just to, to make the difference a bit clearer. Uh, another thing to make the language more readable, especially, for example, when you print it in black and white or, or uh, create complicated diagrams with lots of layers or structure, we added an optional notation where you can denote the layer or aspect of an element by having a letter in the top left hand corner. So for example, a B for the business layer, if you have that in the top left hand corner, you can use that to show that it's a business layer concept. Uh, you know that, say, service is denoted in the same way across the layers, and this helps you identify what layer you're modeling in, in, in the multi-layer picture. Um, so just showing an example of that, here we see these letters for uh, a layered picture of our uh, example company, Arc Insurance, we see the, its business process for handling claims and then the application supporting that and then the technical infrastructure. And you see the B, A, and C letters in the corners there. So this is an optional notation. You're not obliged to use that, but you can. And that is, well, I think, helpful for, for uh, say, printing in black and white where you don't have these three colors to show things. And color, in any, uh, in any case, has no official meaning in Archimate. So you have more flexibility this way. 